G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. Cool. So we'll move on to the Gold Coast Suns, who finished third last, aka 16th, with a record of 7-15. and 15, And their percentage was 76.8%. You are really huffing down that vape. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not sponsored by vape, but maybe we should, get, should be. Bloody earth. Um, uh, anyway, in terms of Gold Coast snapshot, they were, I'd say, overall, it was a year where maybe it didn't translate in wins and losses. So they won two more than last year. Uh, but if you extrapolate that, that's only a very small incremental improvement. But I think it is a positive that they sustained their effort levels over the year a bit better. Um, the story of the last couple of years has been that they've started the season well uh, and then towards the end of the year were completely uncompetitive. And that wasn't the case this year. I think they beat Carlton in like the last two or three rounds of the season. Uh, they had a late win. That's what it was. Um, positives for the Gold Coast? They kind of had what I was alluding to when I was talking about North Melbourne in that consistency throughout the year. Like they've sort of created those structures and like routines and stuff, and it sort of showed throughout the year, regardless of what lineups they've had, because they have had some injury adversity and stuff. Mm. It's sort of shown there. So like, they've got that even keeledness that you'd like to see for a club to build on and grow into something special. I've been quite defensive of Gold Coast this year. They've copped some criticism. I think things are going about as well as they can realistically expect. The, what we have seen, I think, is a transition where the, the young players are really taking a step up. So Ben King was in All-Australian, the frame for it, like with a month to go in the season. He's a young guy. He had uh, Top seven or so in the Coleman. Yeah, and he was in the top three to five at one point, yeah. I think. So uh, I think he was genuinely third in the Coleman, yeah. Huh. So uh, I think he kicked 40-odd goals in a team that was struggling on field. Tuke Miller. Tuke, bloody great year. I didn't look this up, but could he be the first non-Gary Ablett All-Australian they've had? I don't think they've had another All-Australian. Probably. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Let us Maybe a defender or something, yeah. Mm. Like a Harbrow or something like that. I I don't think so, though. Maybe, yeah. Let us know in the comments so we don't have to do our own research. (laughs) But either way, uh, he would generally be in that conversation. I'd be surprised if he doesn't get get a spot, to be honest. Um, But also, just their general youth... Um, drove that improvement. I think Anderson had a pretty understated season. He didn't get the second year blues, that's for sure. No, if anything, he improved. He was getting 30 posy games. Doesn't really get talked about because of the, how much talent they have. And a couple other young guys like Will Powell and Jeremy Sharp, both from WA. Uh, Powell in that back line. I think Sharp as well played a bit of back. Um, bit of back wing. Back, yeah. I was going to say he's, he's an outside mid that sort yeah. of maybe played a bit defensively and um, got his hands on the footy and impacted as well. So. It's good when your younger guys are taking more of the mantle, even if you don't yeah. improve in wins and losses. I think that's something promising, um, which is something I kind of like about. what you saw in Freo last year. Yeah, 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 or even this year. We will get yeah. to Freo, but I agree. Uh, what, are, what are your negatives for the Gold Coast Suns? I don't like all this chatter around Stewie Jew's security. I think they should back him in and just sort yeah. of go, hey, this is our guy. Mm. The only tweak they could potentially make is if Clarko was open to it, it was like a director of coaching work because Clarko and Dua are close from their Hawthorne days. Yeah. Where Clarko can really, at the top, sort of try and instill like that higher level club culture that Gold Coast is still sort of trying to foster. I agree. And uh, I have the same position with Carlton as well. I think 
I think they should back Dewey. And I don't uh, like the wins and losses shouldn't be his main metric at the moment. Huh. And I think they made the mistake not long ago of sacking Guy McKenna when things weren't going too poorly. Rodney Ede takes over because he's seen as a coach who can take them to the next level and he completely fails. They go through another rebuild. <laughs> I think they should stick fat with Dew unless, like you say, Clarkson says, hey, this challenge might be worth it. But I mean, it, okay, for specifically on Clarkson, I think he's taking a year off. Yeah. Dew's got. I don't know what his contract status is. But I think he's probably not At out of contract. At least a year. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, he's not out of contract, otherwise he'd be gone scared. So, but I know Teggy has a year left. That's right. So uh, I agree. They should stick fat with him. The, the one thing I did think was a, a real concern in hindsight is their percentage went down by 14%. So it was nearly it was over 90% last year, and it's down to 76.8%. Fuck, that's putrid. Yeah, man. so in theory, that's um, El Stanco, as they say. Definitely in, in Mexico. El Stanco. Yeah. Absolute putrid. I agree, though. Um, Jared Witt's doing his ACL doesn't help because he does that his ACL. That is very big for the big loss because their rock depth beyond him was mm. non-existent. I was going to say, they had uh, Zach Smith um, mm. and he's retired now. Yeah. So um, they'll need Witt's back. And he's a, he's a quality player. Yeah, he was their captain. captain. Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> uh, Rao didn't really get firing, but it was also... That's that's probably a negative... I would reframe yeah. that negative and say, Rao not getting on the field for half, of, half a year. Yeah. Like, that, that was a massive... Not getting point. a chance to build on his limited first year because he had... Mm. The rough end as well. Yeah, so if Raul plays this year like he played in 2020, then I reckon they pinched a couple extra games, to be yeah. honest. Like, he's he's a quality player. Um, I, I don't think it's a big deal that he didn't fire, but it's just probably something that they wish had happened. Uh, they banking on it, I think, a little. Yeah, I think, on him. I think there's been a lot of external pressure and expectation on Raul that he was going to come in and be this brown low quality player straight away and I thought that was always going to be really unrealistic especially with the Walsh precedent was probably set, mm. set him up for a harsh sort of thing in that kind of regard true true the draft selections are 3, 19, 22 and 43 how do you think they should navigate through this offseason? Goldie Gold Coast yeah. I, I don't mind the idea of like targeting more Brandon Ellis type dudes for mm. him actually like those fringe 22 guys that can show the young guys the rope show them that degree of professionalism from other clubs yep. fill out their list rather than necessarily trying to top out with more top end guys. Probably keep the first couple of picks and take like a best available yep. sort of thing, but beyond that, nothing too wild from them. Yeah. No home. I wouldn't try and hit a home run, let's put it that way. Every off season, we hear about a young team putting their top three pick on the, on the table uh, and it's oh. fielding offers and it's almost never happened. It never really gets traded. <laughs> They're just um, that valued. They are. The picks. But it also doesn't work that way in which you offer the pick first. The players, mm. the, if a player, a big player is going to move, that's the, the person you need to court first. So <laughs> it's, there's no good Gold Coast saying, all right, pick three's on the table. Who are you gonna, which star player are you going to offer? Trades don't work that way. You've got you to court the player first and then... Uh, use that pick but I think they're in a position where they could trade pick three for a yeah. star player oh you've got to court the players first apparently Carlton and Adam Chera haven't talked that is weird we will we will get <laughs> to that but that is a fair point to bring up that, that is strange but stuff. realistically they're talking to managers and shit that's a crock of crap really yeah but yeah carry on uh, I, I think in terms of their list um more maturity, like you said. I'm not too sure who yet, but somebody who's going to be best 22, not necessarily a, another Anthony Miles, Corey Ellis kind of setup. I think they should go for someone who's actually going to be in their best 22 and improve them in the short term, and that will help sell the future to the guys that they've got at the moment. Uh, and I think they could, I think they should pick up another key position defender as well. Yeah, You've got Sam Collins is pretty good, oh, obviously good. Yeah, little undersized, but he's very good. I love Sam Collins. That's right. So between yeah. Collins and Ballard, who are two very good players, yeah. none of them are like real hulking strong key defenders yeah. who are going to be able to take on a Max King in the future mm. or whatever. Once so, he puts on those kegs. Yeah, so I think like a Gib kiss in the draft or something like that, but we'll do draft content later. I gave him a C for this year. Would you deviate from that? Nah, I'd probably stick with that really. Like, I did what they could. They had some nice wins in like, that win where Tony Cochran was carrying on like a poor chop loving mm. it on telly after they had that win. Mm. That was good to see for the club. Yeah. They had some real iconic positives compared to other years where they might have had better years, but they weren't didn't have those like standout positives. Yeah, they've had some real standout like yeah. Gold they did Coast beat is, Sydney by seven goals. Yeah, <laughs> so I should have mentioned yeah. that. Like they're having those sort of moments where you're like, yeah, something's going on in Gold Coast, rather mm. than just sort of yeah, this team's plodding along. Yeah, yeah, fair point, fair summary. 